honored delegates, ladies and gentlemen. We meet here in an hour of grief and challenge. Dag Hammarskjöld is dead, but the United Nations lives. His tragedy is deep in our hearts, but the tasks for which he died are at the top of our agenda. A noble servant of peace is gone, but the quest for peace lies before us. Dag Hammarskjöld became one of the most internationally famous Swedes in modern times. His contribution as UN Secretary General during the years 1953 to 1961 still serves as an example of the organization's work. The tragic and mysterious air crash in Undola on September 18, 1961 brought him back to his childhood town of Uppsala, where he is buried in the old cemetery only a few hundred yards from the place where he spent most of his childhood, at the Uppsala Castle. This is the story of Dag Hammarskjöld's time in Uppsala, from childhood to university. The world in which I grew up was dominated by principles and ideals of a time far from ours, and, as it may seem, far removed from the problems facing a man of the middle of the 20th century. However, my way has not meant a departure from those ideals. On the contrary, a never abandoned effort, frankly and squarely to build up a personal belief in the light of experience and honest thinking, has led me to recognize and endorse, unreservedly, those very beliefs which once were handed down to me. Dag's father, Jalmar Hammerkweld, was a professor, Court of Appeal president, governor, prime minister, internationally respected law expert and a member of the Swedish Academy. He was reportedly an authoritarian and emotionally cold man, but with an indomitable will and great professional expertise. Dag's mother, Agnes Hammerkweld, was almost of the opposite nature. She was amicable, socially active, caring and warm. Jalmar and Agnes met in Uppsala in the late 1880s. The couple had four sons, Bo, Orca, Stian and Dag, who was the youngest. He was born on the 29th of July 1905 in Jönköping, where the family lived temporarily. Agnes forged particularly strong ties to Dag, an intimate relationship that would last for the rest of her life. The Hammerkweld family moved to Uppsala in 1907, when Dag was two years old. Yalmar took office as governor, and Uppsala Castle became Dag's home in childhood and adolescence. From his bedroom window in the castle's north tower, he had views of Castle Hill, the Botanical Garden, and Carolina Redaviva. From here, he had a unique view of how the city of Uppsala lived and changed through the seasons. The castle, with its rich history dating back to the 16th century, was of course an inspiring and exciting environment to grow up in. But it was also relatively isolated from the rest of the town. In his essay, Castle Hill, where Dag himself reflects on his childhood surroundings, he describes the feeling of being united with the people on occasions such as May Day and New Year's Eve, when the residents of Uppsala gathered on Castle Hill. Finally comes the eve of May Day, the plains and the town's own New Year festival. In the fading light, the smoke from the bonfires drifts in ribbons across the plain. As evening draws on, the hill throngs with people, 
and when the procession of students reaches the north tower, the crowd is dense. The singing swells. The traditional speech is varied anew. Soon the hill lies once more deserted, turned in silence towards what is to come. The castle's east gardens and the wilder, more natural castle hill below was Darg's playground in both summer and winter. This led to a passionate interest for plant and animal life. Darg learned the Latin names and biological terms, and he collected plants and insects with scientific precision. Carl von Linnea was a great inspiration and role model at an early age, and Darg's interest in flora and fauna followed him well into adulthood, when he often went out into the countryside on hikes and mountain walks. On the opposite side of the castle, beyond the botanical garden in the district of Corbo, is one of Uppsala's oldest wooden houses, Villa Tom Tabu. This is where Dag, together with his elder brother Stian, went to private school from the age of six. Their teacher, Hilde Axelsson, who was well known at the time as an outstanding educator, integrated her deep Christian faith into lessons with prayers and Bible reading. The Hammerquell brothers were in many ways treated to a traditional Christian upbringing, not just in school. Along with his mother Agnes, Darg went to church every Sunday, and the Hammerquell family frequently socialised with Archbishop Nathan Söderblom's family. From scholars and clergymen on my mother's side, I inherited the belief that, in the very radical sense of the Gospels, all men were equals as children of God, and should be met and treated by us as our masters in God. Villa Tom de Beau is now a private residence, but the exterior is almost completely preserved. Between 1914 and 1917, the Hammerkeld family lived in Stockholm as Jalmar was Sweden's Prime Minister during the early part of World War I. The hard rationing, which was controlled by the government and affected many people, led to the term Hungerkeld. During this time, Dag and his brothers had to live with having a father who was in a very vulnerable position, and even hated by some of the population. By autumn 1916, Dag moved back to Uppsala, where he started at Uppsala's Higher Education Institution, now called the Cathedral School. His father, Yalmar, had also studied there, and Dag was expected to follow in his father's footsteps, as would be the case throughout most of his education. During his high school years, Dag met a new and stimulating range of people, from different social backgrounds and with different experiences. Classmates have described him as being very helpful and loyal, yet aloof and thoughtful. In his own letters and writings, he recounts his role among his classmates with a sense of alienation, and he indicates social class as a cause. Although he kept a straight face outwardly, it troubled him deeply not to be more involved in his peer group. He also realised that being the son of Hunger Hörld had a considerable impact on how he was treated by people from other social groups. Despite this, his schoolwork didn't suffer, and Darg was the best in the class throughout his time at school. This success was the product of genuine interest and intelligence, rather than pure hard work. Darg graduated in the spring of 1923 with excellent grades. To his great disappointment, his father took one look at his grades and commented that Orca was better. However, Yalmar was also quoted as saying, If I had had Darg's brains, I could have really become somebody. The ancient cathedral school building has subsequently been added to in several stages, but the main building is still intact with its original appearance.
As early as autumn 1923, immediately after graduation, Darg began his university studies in Uppsala. During this time, his feelings of loneliness eased somewhat. Darg developed a close friendship with a few fellow students and devoted a lot of time to philosophical discussions on long walks, often in city streets and along the river. Like his father and older brothers, Darg enrolled at the Upland Student Association. He was not a devoted follower of the student adventures, but by virtue of his name and his ancestry was appointed as the first councillor in the spring of 1929. In this role, he made his public speaking debut with a very popular speech. Although it was a mere two-month position, Darg changed his attitude and approach to student life. He took his leadership role very seriously and took great pleasure in dealing with the students. Their humour and relaxed approach was like a breath of fresh air to Darg, with his more rigid family background. The Upland Student Association fills essentially the same function today as in Hammerworld's time, and like the other old student buildings in Uppsala, it has escaped the unfortunate facelifts of recent years. Bo Beskov's Hammerworld portrait hangs in a place of honour in the student bar upstairs. Darg's progress at university was smooth and very rapid. He studied Roman languages, philosophy and economics, and attained his bachelor's degree after just two and a half years. After a one-term stay in England at Cambridge University, he returned to Uppsala to study law, and when this was done in record time, in autumn 1930, the family moved to Stockholm, where Darg would launch his career as a statesman. He would occasionally return to Uppsala during the following years. He made one such trip here in 1953, shortly before going to New York, to take on his role as United Nations Secretary General. From generations of soldiers and government officials on my father's side, I inherited the belief that no life was more satisfactory than one of selfless service to your country or humanity. I, Doug Hammarskjöld, solemnly swear to exercise in all loyalty, discretion and conscience. The functions in trust... Hammarskjöld succeeded in streamlining the cumbersome UN organization which gave the post of UN Secretary-General a new authority. His quiet diplomacy won great respect, and in negotiations he followed a neutral line and emphasised the UN's mission to also promote the smaller states against the major powers. Hammerworld designed the UN mandate to establish a peacekeeping force, which has now become a permanent feature of UN crisis management. On September 18, 1961, during UN negotiations for a truce in the civil war in Congo, Darg Hammerkeld was killed in a plane crash in the jungle. In 1961, Darg Hammerkeld was posthumously awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Although 50 years have passed since his death, Darg Hammerkeld's presence is still felt in Uppsala. Firstly, in the form of all the places and environments where he lived and studied as a young man, but also in the wake of his international achievements later in life. The legacy of his professional deeds is the Darg Hammerkeld Memorial Foundation, whose work focuses on issues that are relevant for the United Nations today. The foundation is based in Yeish Gordon, right next to Carolina Rediviva. This is also where Darg Hammerkeld's road, formerly known as the Stockholm Road, begins. It is a seven kilometre long straight road that leads out of the city's southern entrance at Flotsund. The name change occurred after Hammerkeld's death to honour his memory. The Darg Hammerkeld Library 
was founded in 1966 and is a special library within Uppsala University, focusing on international relations. Attractions here include a complete collection of UN documents and reports, as well as a room of literature directly related to Dag Hammarskjöld himself. The castle remains today as it was in Hammarskjöld's time as the governor's residence. In the castle you can also find the Uppsala Art Museum, the Peace Museum, where Dag Hammarskjöld has a central role, and the vast Saborian exhibition. The great hall in the castle, which actually served as a laundry room during Dag Hammarskjöld's time, is still there, but today it is Uppsala's grandest banquet hall. The Castle Hill remains both as a park and as a natural oasis in the town centre, and Uppsala's traditions are still celebrated there as strongly as ever.